Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Okay, thank you everybody. I'm going to be discussing a podcast that'll start another section or playlist. I'm going to call it Music Talk. I would have named it Music Theory, but I don't know much of Music Theory, although I did learn a little when I was younger. Ever since I was a toddler, I was exposed to music like the Rolling Stones, Kiss, Led Zeppelin, and... It stuck with me all my life. If I could say that my father gave me my music interest, my mom gave me my interest in books. About the time I could remember, you know, the first memories, I was living with my grandmother while my mother got an apartment down in Sheepshead Bay or Gravesend on Avenue U. And I was exposed to, like I said, mostly my father's music. I was very young, and we moved to Homecrest and U with my mother, and a friend of my mom brought over one of those suitcases that had the record player in it. I used to love the uh, G.I. Joe and comic book stuff you'd read along while the record played. It was pretty cool. So I got into music in that sense. Loving it, he brought over some Kiss albums, and I was hooked, and Kiss is still one of my favorite bands growing up. Um, I have a friend who I've known since like first grade, but I like to say we were buddies in third grade-ish. He invited me over one day, and I found out he was a huge Kiss fan, and that he was learning how to play guitar, and he offered to teach me. So I'm ever grateful, uh, my friend Burton Gaines. In time, I think I started learning that I was a decent rhythm guitarist for the most part, if I practiced, but that I loved sitting and writing the lyrics or writing stories that I thought would be good for, you know, um, in a, to tell a song, to tell a story in a song. At the same time, I started really getting into Dungeons and Dragons, and I think that's where my creativity started going towards. So I could look back and see that, yeah, I love playing guitar, I love music, and the outlet started narrowing down to writing stories in Dungeons and Dragons. He's an incredible guitarist. I'm going to try to get him to come on the show, do a little interview talk. So... I'll discuss what I might do with the channel, section, playlist, etc. So since I have a friend who's in the music industry, still plays shows, tours, I can get his perspective on things since I've been out of the loop for a long time. And every once in a while, maybe highlight a band. So one of my favorites is Queensryche. I might talk about it. Think about what albums are better than others. Discuss their hierarchy and how they fit in. Maybe do the same with other bands I love. I might even discuss when I might do a uh, podcast about music therapy, which I use Queensryche for. And it's just a play on my meditation thought processes and applying it to music. Because of the way it can make you feel. I think music is really important. It's a universal language. And I'll discuss things like that perhaps in time. But I see it at first just being me getting my uh, one of my best friends over. Discussing music like we always do in general. Getting some podcasts on and maybe doing a sort of interview. And maybe get some dates of when he's playing. So maybe a little promotion there also. I'll talk about what I think a band's criteria might be. So although I love all music in a sense, I'm mostly a hard rock type guy. I'm not a big fan of rap, although 
I do go back to things I enjoy, like the Sugar Hill Gang, Run DMC, Beastie Boys. That progressed into more, maybe Cypress Hill. But not really individual rap, and I look forward to it. Although I'll catch it every once in a while. There's some great Eminem, Rihanna uh, duets they do. So there are things I pick out here and there that I, I really like. But for the most part, I'm a heavy metal, ACDC, Judas Priest, Def Leppard, those type of bands, Queen Dry Kiss, Black Sabbath, Led Zeppelin. I guess I can keep going on. And like, if you have two albums and you're really famous and you got a bunch of hit songs, does that compare to one of the bands I think is the best is let's say the Rolling Stones you got such a longevity the hit the list of hits are incredible the albums for the most part are extremely good so there is that kind of debate I guess um, you got Guns N' Roses how many albums did they put out they were great but does it really compare to the Beatles and the Rolling Stones and so there could be those discussions too. And like I said, uh, music has been very important to me. I think it could be important to everybody. That mentality of, even though you have a genre, like I like heavy metal, hard rock, I look to reach out to find other artists and music that'll move me. So I'll even watch the uh, old westerns with um, Clint Eastwood. Ennio Marconi, I think his name is, if I fucking pronounce it right. Ecstasy of Gold, I think it's called. I love Jewel. Her voice is, in my opinion, one of the best. I think in the counterpart would for me would be Jeff Tate of Queensryche. So maybe all these type of discussions about who's your favorite singer, what band I critically think is the best but might not be my favorite. You talk about bands like uh, Grateful Dead. I'm not a big fan. I have a couple of songs, you know, I know from them and maybe talk about. But for the most part, I don't think you can deny their longevity and their place in history. A while ago with my fiance passing away, music became uh, a little scary to me. It would bring out too much emotions. And that's what my music therapy was for. Now I can listen to anything. And here and there it moves me in a way that might make me sad or melancholy. Which is normal. But not an overwhelming panic attack or um, you know, a uh, breakdown of, of sorts. Years ago while she was going through her therapy or remission. I went to see a cousin of mine. Who was playing in a band, very young band. They started young. And I went to see them in Coney Island on the boardwalk. And I think it was Sweet Child of Mine they did a cover of. And I just lost it. I mean, I broke down. I had to leave. And those type of situations have always been scary to me now. In time, I used my own variation of music therapy and worked my way through it however I still haven't touched my guitar and I think that'll be one of the uh, podcasts I do that might highlight the effect of you know the things we go through in life and trauma but music uh, could be a universal healing I think it could bring people together as it often does even when we have little arguments about what genres we like. And I think that'll be it. I mean, I'd look back and cherish the days I played guitar with my friends and tried to get bands formed and go into the studios. And But I don't think I never took it. I don't know, maybe a part of me just wanted to be famous and take care of my family, that type of mentality. But it wasn't a super passion so i look forward to discussing like i said um bands in general maybe the value of music in people's lives get a friend over who's in the industry 
do an interview, get some insight into what it's like now. Because apparently after the Napster ordeal back in the day, everything has changed. It's a big turn on the uh, whole system with how bands get recognized, promoted, how they start making money. It seems to be a whole new ball game. And that looks like an area I'd like to discuss every once in a while to get into. Plus, just putting out music that you like. I think it's a good way to get people to know you. You look at um, people's channels and you might go through their liked videos or some such. But to have a little section that you you can get to know somebody by the music they like. I think it's a little another way to add to the premise of the site and the channel until next time i hope everybody's doing well hope the holidays and the new year is treating you good i'll see you next time